we've been joined by Paul Craig Roberts, who many of you will know, of course, was the father of Reaganomics, served as assistant treasury secretary under Ronald Reagan, uh, former editor of the Wall Street Journal. And of course, Mr. Roberts is a prolific author and writer whose articles we eagerly await. We posted his latest article uh, on prisonplanet.com this morning. Mr. Roberts, great to have you on the show today. Thank you, Paul. Good to Paul, speak to you. you. Before you start, get started with me, let, I, w I was fascinated by the piece yesterday, uh, your report, I think it was, on Steve uh, Pizenik. Did I pronounce that right? Steve Pizenik, yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I thought this was uh, amazing, not so much the Bin Laden part, because I think that's been known for some time, but his statement that uh, he had been told by a, a general from, I think, Wolfowitz staff that 9-11 was an inside job and that he was willing himself, Paul, uh, St Steve uh, Pazenik, to uh, testify under oath before Congress and reveal the guy's name. Now, this is an aston astonishing development. Uh, it, it, this is for real, I take it. I take it you've got this on tape and or video or something. It was said live during uh, Mr. Pachenik's interview with Al Alex Jones on Tuesday, and that's right. And it's been it's a, it's an astounding admission which has been completely ignored by the mainstream media. They well, dare not even try and debunk it. You know, um, uh, I'm not. Uh, his credentials are are substantial, uh, but what puzzles me about it is, I mean, that kind of marks him for a dead man, doesn't? I mean, they're not. Uh, they're either going to ignore him or they're going to kill him. I mean, why, as well connected as he's been in government, it seems to me he would know that if he says something like that, he's going to have an accident before anybody takes him up on the offer. I mean, that strikes me as, uh, <clears throat> as reckless, almost. I mean, what uh, I've been really puzzled about why he would say that. I mean, I can understand revealing it. Uh, but not, you know, not forecasting that he was going <laughs> to reveal it. That's one well, thing they uh, they won't let be revealed. They're not going to let that happen. Exactly. And I mean, Alex asked him about that. Alex was trying to get him on air to say, you know, I'm not suicidal like the DC madam. And obviously we know what happened to her. Uh, but Pachenik basically said, you know, I've, I'm a, I'm a professional, I've got dirt on them, and he was basically not afraid of that. But he's, he's actually coming up as a guest at the top of the hour, and that's something I can uh, press him further on uh, in, the, in the next hour of the show. Um, okay. my, question, my question for you, Mr. Roberts, is um, you wrote on Monday that the whole Bin Laden thing had, quote, the odor of a staged event. Now you've been justified in that assessment with these... Um, situation room photos that the media told us were an account of uh, Obama and Hillary Clinton watching the live assassination of uh, bin Laden unfold. That has now been documented to be completely fraudulent. The live video stream was cut off. They saw nothing of the raid. Um, you've, you've wrote this other article today, which is excellent. Um, what, what do you think are the most alarming discrepancies in this whole bin Laden narrative that we've been sold on by the White House and the media? Well, uh, you know, Paul, uh, the thing was uh, never believable in the beginning because uh, the, first, the original story uh, of a firefight uh, with the heroic SEALs taking on Al-Qaeda, which Rumsfeld, descri uh, Rumsfeld described as the most highly trained, the most dangerous, most vicious killers on the planet. And so they get... The SEALs get into a firefight with these vicious, highly trained killers, and they don't get a scratch. So that already tells you something stinks, because you anybody can hear a helicopter coming, <laughs> you know, even even people who are asleep. So <clears throat> um, then, before forty-eight hours pass, the whole story changes fundamentally. There's no firefight. Uh, bin Laden's not a coward, after all, hiding behind a woman. He's not even armed, says the White House press spokesman. Uh, the direct quote, he wasn't armed. 
And so all of a sudden we go from uh, heroes in a firefight to uh, cold-blooded murderers. And even worse, you see, even if you believe the government's story, you have to see it as the most botched operation in history. So why in the world would you kill the mastermind who has all the secrets of terrorism when he's unarmed, harmless, and surrounded? That's the last thing you would do is to kill him. And so that part of the story it's not so much a discrepancy that's important. It's the story itself. It makes no sense. And the reason they had to say that is they didn't capture him. They didn't kill him. He wasn't there. He was already dead. This is a staged event for a bunch of hidden agendas, not merely for Obama's uh, popularity and poll ratings and re-election campaign. That's no doubt part of it. But there are other agendas that this event is being used for. For example, the justification of torture is one. Uh, probably uh, starting more trouble with Pakistan is another. More powers for homeland security is another. Probably more false flag attacks. Uh, that they will say is due to al-Qaeda retaliation for killing uh, bin Laden. And there are all kinds of agendas that are hiding behind this, this false story. Um, so the dead giveaway is that if you actually did catch this guy, you wouldn't quickly throw the evidence of your success into the ocean. The minute you do that, the whole story becomes suspect because there's no real explanation for why they dump the body in the ocean. The story they give is, is obviously a fabrication and it's incorrect uh, that they were giving him a quick burial in keeping with Muslim practices. This has been challenged by the Muslim imams. They say that you're supposed to be buried in the ground with the head pointed toward Mecca and that the only excuse for dumping somebody at sea as if it's a very long voyage and the body is decomposing. And so every aspect of the story uh, is phony. There's nothing true about any of it. And, and the other great puzzle, Paul, is why did they change the story? If you're going to pull off something like this, you've got to know what the story is and stick with it. And yet before 48 hours passes, the whole story has changed fundamentally. Why? What was the pressure to change the story? Um, they didn't have to worry about Pakistan ratting on them. Pakistan is enough of an American public uh, uh, puppet that if it was ordered to shut up, it would shut up. I mean, Pakistan lets the United States uh, conduct illegal uh, military actions on its territory, killing its citizens. Uh, Pakistan lets the United States Army send the Pakistani Army into tribal areas, into entire provinces, displacing entire populations of people. Uh, if Washington tells Pakistan, hey, we're going to stage this thing and we want your help and you better not say anything about it, they're going to cooperate. So the real question is, why did the story change? What's, what's going on is... Uh, it, it, are people in the government now, I'm just speculating, I haven't any idea. Are people in the government now uh, seeing they don't want Obama, some of them don't want Obama again, and, uh, and they see that he's managed to do this to boost his poll ratings by 24%, and so now they're going to undermine it because they want to get rid of him or they'd rather have a different puppet or something. All kinds of things are going on that we don't know about, and that might explain why... The administration, the government, is destroying its own story. It's not being destroyed by news people. The, the news people are still celebrating the, uh, uh, the victory over bin Laden. And the news people have uh, given the imprimatur to uh, uh, extra-legal murder of unarmed people. So it's not the news media who's exposed. It's... it's the government itself that keeps changing the story. And where's the pressure coming from to change the story? I mean, why create such massive uh, 
credibility problems for the government's own story. So maybe all the people inside the government are fighting each other over who they want to run the next time. I don't know what's going on, but it's that's the biggest puzzle to me. Maybe uh, somebody uh, on your guest can, maybe Steve today can throw some light on that. But that is the most interesting question. So the two real questions, and then uh, and I'll be finished here. One is, what are the real agendas that this news event is designed to further? And two, why did the government wreck its own story? By changing it before 48 hours are over, without any obvious sources of pressure on them to change the story. It's you know, amazing. I mean, the Kennedy story. The Kennedy was killed by Oswald. Period. And we've had that story now for what forty, fifty years or something. They don't change it. Why did they change this story? They haven't changed the nine eleven story. And well, exactly. And I mean, you've got the uh, press secretary Carney, who's now being lambasted by all sides of the media as this flounderer this failure because he's, he's having difficulty getting the fable straight. He keeps tripping over his words. He keeps giving contradictory explanations. And like you said, it's, it's baffling. It's almost as if it's deliberately designed to look hokey. Um, I mean, you've got neighbors surrounding this so-called compound they say they'd never saw Bin Laden. It's a stone's throw away from a Pakistani military base. All the residents have to have ID cards. They have to go through checkpoints to get anywhere. Uh, and the only photos that have been released are of these um, victims. Of course, none of them are Bin Laden. And it's increasingly starting to look like he was, I mean, we know that every intelligence professional worth their salt said that he's, be, he's been dead for nine years. It's starting to look as if um, perhaps some members of the Bin Laden family were there, um, and that's, that's what they used as the reason to go in. But, I mean, it's, it's like in your article today, you quote this email that you received from a reader um, who asks, you know, why the government's so sloppy in its lies that it, it virtually makes no effort to make them appear credible. I mean, why are they so arrogant in their total disregard for the intellect of the American people? I think the answer to that, Paul, is they got away with 9-11. They blew up two skyscrapers in plain view of everybody, in plain view of the TV cameras. We've got recordings all over the world of these buildings being blown up. Anybody that looks at those buildings can see they're being blown up. They're not falling down. These are not buildings falling down from structural damage from an airliner or fire. These are buildings are blowing up. You can see they're blowing up. If they get away with that, if they can get away with the fable that a few Saudis with box cutters can outwit all 16 American intelligence agencies, all the intelligence agencies of NATO, of Israel even, uh, can outwit NORAD, air traffic control, airport security four times in one morning, can cause the state-of-the-art uh, Pentagon air defenses to fail. Anybody can pull off this superhero stuff. How could anybody believe that? You can't. I mean, did you see the film V for Vendetta? Where yeah. the superhero blows up the British Parliament? Well, hell, the 9-11 attack makes that look like nothing. And yet people fall for these things. I mean, so they, I guess that's the reason the government uh, just shows it doesn't make any effort to even make a credible lie. It just knows that it can use the patriot card and 80% of the people will fall for it. The patriotism will, and they'll be, oh, we got him, ah, we got the towel head. So uh, that's what they rely on, I think. They don't think anybody is going to think about it. People are just going to celebrate. And um, if you start thinking about it, you have to give up celebrating, and they'd rather celebrate. 